Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel and Happy New Year. I wanna start this video off by giving a spotlight to the R&B singer, dancer, songwriter, and actress, Tiffany Evans. Most people remember Tiffany Evans as a child star with an incredible voice who had a hit song called Promise Ring featuring Sierra. And some of you are probably wondering what happened in Tiffany's career and what is she up to now? <laughs> start in the music business at the age of nine years old when she performed at the Apollo. The audience was completely floored at Tiffany's vocal ability. She had such a powerful voice at a young age and her vocal ability was able to open up new doors for her when she competed on the talent show Star Search. Tiffany won the grand champion title in the junior division of Star Search and she became a star overnight. Her story in particular was very touching because before the fame, she and her family were homeless. But Star Search gave her the breakthrough that she and her family needed. After she won Star Search, Columbia Records reached out to her and offered her a contract at the age of 10 years old. And things for her took off from there. She made two appearances on Oprah Winfrey's show. She landed her first acting role in the show The District and also landed a role in Tyler Perry's hit movie Diary of a Mad Black Woman. And she sang Father Can You Hear Me for the movie soundtrack. Also, she sang a song called Who Am I for the soundtrack for Tarzan 2, and she released her first single called Let Me Be Your Angel, which was a remake of Stacey Ladisaw's classic song. Things, however, started to slow down for Tiffany. She had an incredible talent, but Columbia Records didn't know what to do with her. At age 11, she did release an EP where she covered other popular songs, but the label still didn't know how to market someone so young. I think marketing was a major issue with me. They did not know how to market me. I had a gift. People realized I had a gift, but they didn't know how to make it convincing. You know, if I sang a love song, would you believe me at 11 or 12? You know, like, what has she, what has she experienced? When you're that young, it's hard to uh, be an artist and be believable at the same time. Right. So I think they wanted me to grow a little bit. And when I turned 14, I ended up working with uh, Sierra for my first single. In 2007, Tiffany was finally able to have a breakthrough. She released a single called Promise Ring featuring the R&B and pop singer Sierra. At the time, Tiffany shared the same manager Sierra had and the collaboration made sense. Sierra helped bring traction to the song and soon people were dancing to the infectious up-tempo record. Promise Ring was played regularly on the urban radio stations and BET 106 and Park. The song was fun and age appropriate, but it also showcased Tiffany's vocals in a new way. And it showed that Tiffany's big voice was not only suitable for ballads, but it also works with other type of songs as well. Promise Ring was a great leading single for Tiffany's debut album. Unfortunately, it would take nine months before Tiffany would release a follow-up single. In 2008, Tiffany released her second single, I'm Grown, featuring Bow Wow. The song was received well by her fans, but it wasn't as popular as Promise Ring, and the momentum did start to die down. By the time Tiffany released her debut album, her singles already had its peak. She was supposed to release Lay Back and Chill as her third single, but that single was scrapped. Tiffany's self-titled debut album didn't have enough buzz to help with its sales. So unfortunately, it didn't do as well as expected. But the project was still a solid effort on Tiffany's part. And also Tiffany didn't fail to impress with her vocals on the album. 
Tiffany, however, went through more series of setbacks after the release of her debut album. Her music was pushed back several times. She switched her management team and started working with Matthew Knowles. Also, the helpful connection that she had to Sierra did eventually fade away. Now, what's the relationship now with you and Sierra? Well, there's actually no relationship at all. Um, it was for a while mm -hmm. after everything, but um, I just take it for what it was. It was just, you know, her, she was just a part of that time of my life. Mm -hmm. And I was a part of that time in her life. And it's now past. Sometimes things happen like that. And it, it, it doesn't have to be um, anything bad, no bad blood or anything like that. It's just that sometimes people walk in for a season and they walk out. Around this time, Tiffany Evans got into her first controversy with the pop and R&B superstar Rihanna. In 2009, Rihanna released a single called Russian Roulette, and Tiffany had quite a bit to say about it. She tweeted and deleted several posts on Twitter, first saying that Russian Roulette is going to make the suicide rate skyrocket, and also she tweeted about the darkness in the industry. She said, you gotta watch what you say, because there are a lot of weak people in the world. They are susceptible to anything, so anything you say or do, some people might actually do listen. So make sure it's nothing bad. It's okay to be deep, but not murder deep. She also said in a now deleted tweet, man, I really wish I could tell you guys what the industry really is and what stars are a part of destroying this world. The stars who worship Satan and those who have killed to get the respect they have now. You would be very surprised. Some of your favorite people pretend to worship God, but they only do that to save face or seem innocent. Satan was head of music in heaven. He used influential people to help influence the world. Think about that. Once you make a certain amount of money, just know that that's when they ask you to join. To get you in, you have to accept the beast worship. Once you join, they assist you with your career, make you huge only if you agree and obey to destroy God's word and his children. People listen and pay attention. It's war going on right now between good and evil. Evil will rule this world for a minute. The people that have this power are people that rule the world. I'm done. I won't say any more before I get in trouble. Tiffany's controversial statements did create a lot of conversation and it did also add fuel to the conspiracies that a lot of the entertainers in the industry were a part of the Illuminati. And because Tiffany was in the music industry, more than likely she saw some things and heard some things that confirmed these rumors. Omarion even piggybacked off of what she said and said this in his interview with Boombox. He said, I don't personally know Rihanna's beliefs, but I think there's a very dark and very sinister part of the entertainment business and I think it's very visible. With God in the industry, I think it's really dark. The dark side is having to get in. There's a certain submission that you need to have, just like gang initiation, so to speak. You might have to do something against your moral code. I'm not saying that it's always this way, but when you're someone that is young and you're coming up in the industry and you really don't have a grip on your morals, it can be very dark. The game is just about oversaturation. I don't know if Rihanna has fallen victim to those pressures. I've never really heard her speak about it. I hope she doesn't believe in that stuff and I don't think she does, but I don't know. It's not just been a Rihanna thing. There's been religious speculation about a lot of artists. Tiffany's comments opened up a huge discussion about the industry and it also ruffled a lot of feathers to the point where people started speaking out about it. The producer of the song Chuck Harmony denied that there were any satanic messages in the song and also the writer of the song Neo explained that the song was simply used as a metaphor. Rihanna even addressed Tiffany's statements during her interview with Big Boy. Oh, you know who I would turn off? Who? Tiffany Evans. Tiffany, the little singer girl? Yes. Why would you turn her off? Because she's just mouthing off for no reason and acting like she knows me. And she says something about you? You know, the whole devil worshiping thing, you know. It was a whole, she put out this whole statement. So I don't like when people talk about me and don't know me or don't know what they're saying. It sounds stupid. Hey. Rihanna was offended by some of Tiffany's comments because honestly, it made her look bad. Even though Rihanna doesn't often speak about religion, she has posted about her Christian faith on social media a few times. So maybe Tiffany's comments made people misunderstand her. And that wasn't Tiffany's intent. 
Tiffany had more of an issue with the Russian roulette song and the music industry itself, but she never specifically said that Rihanna was a devil worshiper. She said in her Vibe interview, if anyone felt that someone had called them a devil worshiper and they're not, of course it would rub that person the wrong way. What I wanna clear up is I did not call Rihanna a devil worshiper. Number one, I don't even know her like that. We've only met a couple of times and I would never say anything like that about any of my peers. It's just not in my character. What I was talking about is just music, messages in the music. I was going through a really tough time in my life. I really believe that Russian Roulette was written beautifully, but I think it affected me in a different way because it was such a dark phase in my life. I just felt the need to speak on it. That's the only thing I said about Rihanna. I didn't think people would find that crazy or disrespectful. I just thought I was expressing myself in the best way that I knew how. I wasn't trying to offend her. I didn't say anything about anyone specifically devil worshiping. I guess that's how things get out of hand. But I've learned my lesson. There are different ways to express yourself. I really want people to understand that I didn't say that. Tiffany cleared up the misunderstanding around her statement, but what she said about the music industry definitely had weight to it. And Tiffany was one of those artists who wasn't willing to compromise to get ahead in the industry. She held on to her principles and her faith in God, but she still dealt with obstacles in the industry. Also, she struggled with the pressures of competing in the industry and also being molded into something that she wasn't. I think, you know, men, um, I still feel like this, this industry is dominated by men. I don't want to sound crazy saying this, but I think there's a lot of trying to train the young girl to think a certain way mm -hmm. and to behave a certain way in order to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I was able to catch on to that early on, like, you know, I don't have to do this and I don't have to do that to get some, you know, attention or the, the respect that I need. I could just really be myself yeah. and, you know, go after what I want without feeling intimidated in a room full of, of men. And I'm not saying that, you know, that was my life, my complete life story, but I did go through some of those things because women, you know, we, we are kind of made to feel a little um, inferior. And I'm just gonna say that that's my experience growing up in the industry. A lot like piggybacking of what he said, a lot of manipulation, a lot of, you know, in order to be accepted, you gotta, you gotta compete against this girl, you gotta pick yeah. yourself against this, and you gotta, you gotta be top tier and, or else nobody's gonna respect you. You kinda gotta put yourself out there. Another one of the obstacles Tiffany faced in the music industry was getting her music pushed back. In 2010, she released an inspirational ballad called I'll Be There, which was supposed to be the lead single off of her sophomore album, Perfect Imperfection. However, that album was scrapped. By this time, Tiffany Evans grew tired of her partnership with Columbia Records and her then manager, Matthew Knowles. She cut ties with Matthew Knowles Management Group and Columbia Records, and she decided that she wanted to take her career into her own hands. I had been with Columbia for 10 years when I uh, left, and um, I was just like, you know what, it's just time to do something different. I really want to learn the business for myself. I want to know, you know, what goes on behind everything that I do. I think because I was so young, right. I had to learn about people, right, right. you know, um, that not everybody is out to get you and, and not everybody is out to support you either. Right. And That's and right. some people are out to get you, get you. I had been in this business since I was nine years old. And so at that point, I was just like, OK, I need to know more information than I know now, you know, because I don't need to be 19, 18, 20 years old and people are still taking advantage of me. Um so, and it really, I, I wanted to make sure that I developed Tiffany, you know, like I figured out, okay, this is the type of music I like to make. This is how I like to wear my hair. You know, I had to go through that whole process. And sometimes, you know, a disconnection is, is needed for you to kind of find yourself again. Am I making sense? While Tiffany was in the process of finding herself as an artist, she did quietly get married at the age of 18 to a 24 year old background dancer named Lorenzo. And the following year she had a child with him. Her family was part of the reason why she took a hiatus from music. 
but she never stopped making music. She uploaded singing covers on YouTube and she started up her own company called Little Lady Entertainment. Tiffany also became an independent artist and in 2011, she released her buzz single, You Won't Find Me. The following year in 2012, she released a powerful ballad called If You Love Me. If You Love Me was Tiffany's first single from her EP 143. Tiffany's new music was well received by her fans. Her sound was more mature and her vocals were stronger than ever. She also improved as an entertainer and she began to incorporate a lot of dancing in her performances. In 2014, Tiffany released another buzz single called Baby Don't Go, which was also well received by the fans. However, there were some people who were a little surprised at how mature Tiffany had gotten, especially with her image. But at that point, Tiffany was grown and she had new life experiences that was shaping her as an artist. Baby Don't Go was one of those songs that was directly inspired by her own personal relationship. Another one of her bigger singles that she released independently was her song On Sight featuring Fetty Wap. This was her leading single from her second independent project called All Me. Even though Tiffany put in a considerable effort as an independent artist, she took several breaks that left her fans wondering about her whereabouts. During her breaks, Tiffany was focused on her family, but also she was dealing with some personal issues in her marriage. Tiffany put her husband Lorenzo on blast for cheating on her while she was pregnant with their second child. She outed his infidelity on social media and said, all three of y'all can keep y'all little love triangle y'all got going on. This stuff is sick. As a married woman, you shouldn't F with nobody's husband, regardless of what those people are going through. And you should be really ashamed as well as you men. You run around claiming you love your wife as Christ loved the church, but steady doing the opposite. I've been dealing with this stuff a long time and I've been hurt badly and I have tried to keep my dignity through it all. But HOs will be HOs and even when you're sincerely kind to them, nobody cared when I was pregnant with Adelia about any of the stuff that they were doing to me or had to endure dealing with Lorenzo and his B Naima. Now you could add his friend to your list of people you've F. I've tried to be nice and I have been quiet. I don't give a F about what none of y'all think of me for this. Try to cuss me out, say I'm wrong. I don't care, F them and F all y'all who have a sorry opinion because you don't know any of the stuff I've been through these past years with this BS. This wasn't the first time Tiffany aired out her marital woes on social media. Some years later, Tiffany revealed that her ex-husband was abusive. She said, this is the number one reason I left my ex. What I'm not gonna do is suffer in silence because this man don't wanna let me go. Yes, this is tonight. The black eyes, the busted lips, the countless embarrassments, the cheating, the lying. I've endured for years and so much stuff on my name because of this man. Somehow I'm still the blame for moving on. Now the cat's out the bag. After Tiffany put her ex-husband on blast, she did move forward and divorce him in 2018. Besides what she posted on social media, Tiffany never really opened up about her marital problems in detail, but she did talk about how her toxic marriage affected her career and affected her personally. You know, a relationship has the power to, to make or break you. Like I felt like I had to dim myself a little bit like dim dim my light a little bit which you you know you should never feel right i was i, I wanted to save my relationship i was trying to cater to my career too right, but right. i was trying to really like you know save focus more on on saving my relationship okay and which was the wrong thing to do at the time um, but it really definitely affected me um and so i had to get out of that after tiffany left her ex she continued to put out more music for her fans, and this time she felt freer than ever. She put out singles like Switch Up and Merry Go Round, and she also embarked on a new project with another singer named Jawan Harris. Like Tiffany Evans, Jawan was also a child star who went through difficulties in the music industry. Tiffany and Jawan were good friends, but their friendship bloomed into a romance. They collaborated on different songs together and their musical chemistry was so strong that they decided to form their own group, Jawan and Tiffany. Oh, mercy, mercy me. 
Yeah, we ended up doing the group thing and and it's not to say that we we're not getting rid of our solo Right, right. Um our solo, solo music that solo we've music, created. Yeah, we're not getting our getting rid of our solo music. We are simply we've joined forces forces as a group and we are now focus on the group stuff and then right. when it's time to do the solo stuff we'll focus on that but right, right now we are focused on Juwan and Tiffany Juwan and so Tiffany. that is the group and so you know it may be a while before we get to the solo stuff because Juwan and Tiffany might be like something so special this music this music I mean it's been on repeat for us Juwan and Tiffany released their first official record together called Finally and if you get a chance please check it out and support it because the song is really good and the musical chemistry between Tiffany and Jawan is undeniable. Despite all that Tiffany has been through in the industry and been through personally, she was still able to push through. And Tiffany still remains one of the most talented and underrated vocalists amongst her peers. In the current state of R&B music, real vocalists aren't appreciated like they should be. Tiffany Evans is one of those vocalists who deserves appreciation. Feeling on my body cause I'm missing you I know but now you may think I'm crazy, crazy yeah. Baby, 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 baby Can't you stay with me tonight? Oh, baby music spotlight on the singer tiffany evans thank you all so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and share this video if you care and happy new year to you all